ังปณิธนโนสมังอาทิตถาคเตนัยธรรมปิปุตรัตนังปณิธังเอเตนสัตสุวาติหอนทุก Hello I'm Dinka here at e r River in the library waiting for Ajahn p u n e d a m o the abbot of the monastery to interview him about the library which is The best. Hello, Ajahn. Hello. I have asked you for this interview because you have this rich, most impressive library, and I don't think many people know about it. Other monastics, maybe, but lay people wouldn't know. I don't think. Mm. And it is a great uh, resource for research and Buddhist study. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how big the library is? How many books are there, approximately? <laughs> and what kind of books? I don't know if I can make a accurate uh, estimate of the number of books. Yeah. There's there's a lot of them, several hundred at least. Um, we have a. A very good collection of Buddhist books, of course. The, pretty much everything that's been translated from Pali into English, we've got, and um, that includes some commentarial stuff and you know the entire Sutta Pitaka and so forth, Abhidhamma books, um, Vinaya books, as well as uh, a lot of. Uh, secondary literature in Buddhism, quite an extensive collection of um, uh, Thai ajans and also Burmese uh, vipassana teachers like Ledi Sayada, uh, Mahasi Sayada. Uh, we have um, uh, Zen, Mahayana, and Vajrayana books. It's not not as complete a collection, but a, a good selection, as well as Um, many books uh, on other topics. We have a a lot of practical books, like uh, on things like carpentry and uh, wiring. You know, ha handy books like that. Um, we have a very strong collection of history books because uh, I've always had personally a strong interest in history. We've got books about uh, other religions. And um, uh, a decent selection of fiction books. So it's it's a very eclectic collection. Uh, you know, psychology, philosophy, science. Uh, we've got some of all everything. How did the library come to be? First, the building itself, where the library is housed, which is a big building, and then the collection. How was it put together? Well, it was an idea of mine that we needed some place to to uh, to house the books because we had, before we had the library, the our collection of books was slowly growing and there was no really no real suitable place to put them. Many of them ended up just in my cabin, which is not convenient for other people. Uh, some of them were stored in an unheated shed, which is not good for the books. So I I uh, proposed to the board that we build uh, a dedicated structure for the library, and um, we uh, after some discussion we agreed on a plan. The building has three sections to it, uh, attached. It's like a semi-detached sort of room. On, you know, on one side is the The steward's room, where the steward lives, is in the sa under the same roof, and then the library has two rooms. There's the uh, sitting room in the front with tables and chairs, and uh, uh, where people can sit and read. And then there's the room I'm sitting in now is the the stacks you know, where all the books are housed. Um, so we raised money to build, and um, we built this entire structure with volunteer labor, and. Uh, I wish really I'd kept a record now of everybody who pounded a nail in this thing because there was a lot of people that in different phases of construction that came through and helped in different different uh, parts of it. 
-hmm. And then the collection, where do the books come from? Well, it comes from a variety of sources. A lot of them are donated. Early on when I came to uh, back to Canada, a generous supporter uh, gifted um, gifted us a, a uh, collection of, of the um, Polytech Society books, which started the um, really the, the kernel of the collection of, of uh, Sutta material. And over time, people donated other books. Occasionally, we buy books um, if there's something that we really want to um, fill a hole in the collection. You know, we'll 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 purchase it. Um, I had a lot of personal books that that ended up in in the library, and uh, various people over time have donated, you know, lesser lesser amounts, a book here and there. And so it's built up slowly over time. So I suppose people are still welcome to donate books? Yes. And what kind of books? What is missing? Um, I would uh, be particularly interested in any uh, uh, new books, particularly, say, academic studies relating to Buddhism that, that, that come out. Um, uh, books on um, Buddhist history, um, pretty much, and uh, pretty much anything else. Uh, we're not really, we don't really want to receive piles of old uh, paperback novels, nothing like that. But you know, uh, the occasional good, good book. If you know, if somebody has some, sometimes there's interesting books that are, you know, non-Buddhist books that are also good, like science or or history that people want to donate that. That's also very welcome. What are the books you return to most often? Books you can't live without? Or let me put it this way. What books do you keep in your kuti? Uh, outside of this collection, that's the community collection, I have in my, in my kuti, I've got a smaller collection of uh, basic Buddhist texts. I have Diginakaya, Majimanakaya, Samyutta, and Guttara. I've got my own copies of those and Vasudhimaga, and um, you know, a few other things. Uh, probably the, the one book that I go that I go back to again and again and open up to look up at some look at something is uh, Vasudhimaga. Mm -hmm. Right. You are a scholar with uh, broad interests, and uh, presumably spend a lot of time reading. What kind of function does that study and knowledge of Buddhism, but also outside of Buddhism, have in your Buddhist practice? Do you find it useful, and how so? Uh, well, I do, but I think there's different different types of personalities, different approaches to Dhamma. My first teacher, Kema uh, Ananda, he said that uh, uh, study is is important in only two times right at the beginning of your practice to establish a foundation and uh, uh, after you start teaching so you develop a vocabulary and uh, you know has something to to draw on uh, and there is there are strains in Buddhism both in um, Theravada and, and in Zen I think also that have a kind of anti-intellectual bias that, that uh, Sometimes you hear, you know, a discouragement of too much study. I think the danger in study is if people think that they understand the Dhamma because they they can cite formal definitions. Study can't substitute for direct experience, but it is a if it's approached in in the right way, it can be a very important adjunct to the practice, to uh, broaden your perspective and, and um, learn to see things in a new way. Yes. I know you have a background in science and engineering and history and maybe some other disciplines too. What uh, are the disciplines you find most useful when studying Buddhism? Like, Mathematics, psychology, physics, biology. Um, 
Yeah, that's a good question. My The first thing that comes into my mind is physics. Uh, but I, I think, all, you know, any any study can be approached with the eye of Dhamma. You're, you're you know, taking the, um, you know, some body of knowledge and uh, applying it to a greater understanding, really, of First Noble Truth. You're understanding samsara better whenever you look at... Uh, uh, at, at any at biology or um, history, you know, uh, history particularly has been a you know a lifelong interest of mine. And if I pick up a book to read just for fun now, it's you know for uh, leisure. It's mostly a history book. Mm-hmm. I, I I almost don't read fiction anymore, um, and I think that you know this that's a, a study of human behavior over time and uh, human interactions I think that can that can inform a lot of, of Dhamma and having the history of um, of Buddhism history of India and uh, Sri Lanka Thailand and the development of the Sangha and you know I think this is very useful for putting things into context as well I'm thinking of science, and what comes to mind is the definition of dhammas or dhamma events that you like to use often, point instant. Yes. And then you go on and uh, explain the terms, point taking no space and instant taking no time, and uh, it becomes uh, very clear what is meant. And my scientist uh, friends appreciate that you know they are so annoyed by those spiritual teachers who talk about science and dismiss it without understanding much yeah so they would then exemplify you as different saying but this person knows what they're talking about yeah yeah, I like to uh, sometimes in my demo talks. I like to you know compare things to to physics and, and you know, quantum physics, and I'm always a little bit uh, let's say a little bit hesitant of doing that because I uh, I do have some knowledge of it, but I would say it's like an educated layperson's knowledge. I'm not I'm not a I'm not a physicist. I, I I'm not an expert, and I'm always afraid somebody's going to call me on it sometime. <laughs> how I got it wrong. <laughs> no, it was some high-end scientists that said you knew what you were talking about. Oh, okay, okay. That's good to hear. Mm-hmm. What about other religions and uh, other different schools within Buddhism? How big a portion of the library is those books and how big is your interest in spiritual studies outside of Buddhism and within Buddhism, but outside of Theravada? Yeah. Uh, well, to take the first question, um, we do have a pretty decent collection of uh, books in, in Mahayana, Zen, and Tibetan Buddhism. It's, it's not nearly as extensive or complete as our Theravada collection, and I would actually like to round it out and get some more. I think it would improve the collection. Um, and we have books from um, you know, Christianity and uh, Hinduism and you know, various various other kind of schools of thought. Again, it's, it's more like a, a sampler rather than an extensive collection. Um, I take some interest in... in uh, Learning about um, particularly other schools of Buddhism, I I I, I quite like Zen, the Zen approach, and uh, um, there's some some things in Tibetan Buddhism that appeal to me. So I think it just broadens your understanding and horizons. My feeling is that it's if someone's serious about uh, practice, they should have one core tradition that's their home, and they they study that extensively but that it it can broaden your understanding to branch out a bit and take in some other other teachings and even things that are outside of buddhism to read uh, um you know like christian books or um uh hindu 
Currently, I'm I'm reading a book about Zoroastrianism, it's something I don't, have very little knowledge of, and I want to kind of fill that gap. Mm -hmm. Yes. What other monastery libraries do you know of that are comparable to yours, or maybe even better equipped than yours? Well, the, I think maybe the one at uh, Amaravati, of the ones I've seen, is maybe uh, bigger than this one, more extensive than this one. Mm -hmm. Are monastery libraries open to lay people or just to the monastics? Well, they're, they're, it's, it's open for people who are staying here. We don't, we don't lend books out to take away. But you know, if you're staying at the monastery, you can take books back to your your cabin and and read them. Do you have any idea what are the books most read by people who come here? Um, I think some of the Thai ajans, Ajahn Cha. Everybody likes to read Ajahn Cha and uh, uh, Ajahn Samedo. You know, the, these, I think those are probably the most commonly, uh, and then maybe a second category would be some of the suttas, but more people who want to get a little deeper in this, into the study, pick up the suttas. I usually recommend if people want to start studying suttas, the first thing they should read is Bhikkhu Bodhi's one volume in the Buddha's words, which is a selection, selections from the suttas arranged topically. And that gives you, a, in one volume, it gives you a very good overview. Mm -hmm. I know there have been stewards here who found great use of the library and found plenty of time for their study on top of their many duties, like chopping wood, hauling water, preparing the sauna, etc. The chores are plenty and everyone has to contribute, but... Would you be or are you open to people coming here to study and do research as their primary activity and help with things only when and if needed? Yes, yeah, I would I would welcome that. That's that would be a a valid use of the, the facilities. We we do expect anyone who's here, whether they're on a meditation retreat or they're here for study, that they'll contribute to help out because there's a, a lot that needs to be done every day just in terms of uh, wood and water and um, so forth. Before enlightenment, chop wood, haul water. After enlightenment, chop wood, haul water. <laughs> if they contribute a bit of uh, chores, a bit of helping out every day, then I'm happy to let them devote their time to study. Mm -hmm. What kind of study would you say this library is most suitable for? Well, Buddhism, of course, but given the broad range of books and topics? Um, I think if someone wants to uh, make a study of the of the the Buddhist scriptures, because you know, it's quite an extensive it's quite an extensive study just to get through the Sutta Pitaka, you know, several volumes, and then there's the commentaries and um, the Abhidhamma books. So we have all those resources here, and we have Pali study books. You know, learn Pali. We don't have one thing. We don't have is hard copies of the uh, the scriptures in Pali. I've not felt the need to acquire those because uh, myself, if I go to the Pali, I I do it on my computer. It's much more convenient and simple. There's now you know you can get the whole Pali canon and commentaries downloaded onto a computer, and you have search. You can do search functions and look up functions, and it's much more accessible than hard copies. Mm -hmm. uh, so. If, you know, someone had that material, if they had a laptop with them and they had that material on the computer, they could have the English translations here and, and, and uh, do quite a bit of uh, in-depth study. Also, uh, 
the broad collection of uh, material from Thai teachers that that would be something somebody could um, do do a, a you know a proper academic study of of the different Thai ajans. Mm -hmm. How do you see the future of this library? Would you want to expand it, protect it? Yeah, um, I don't think I don't think we're really contemplating physically expanding it. We still have when we when I built it, I made a rough estimate of how much shelf space we'd need for the collection we had, and I added, I think, thirty percent, and. Uh, we still have some shelf space left, so we're not running up against the hard limit yet, but it's getting kind of close. Um, so, but I don't really, I don't really see building any any additional space. Not, you know, I think this is probably enough. I mean, if we needed to free up shelf space, we could go through and get rid of some books. Mm -hmm. I have no more questions. Is there anything you would like to add that we haven't talked about? Um, I would like to to quote one thing uh, that uh, somebody told me when we uh, when we finished building this. We did manage to build it within our budget, we, which was amazed everybody that we didn't go over budget. And uh, I think uh, everybody agrees it's a beautiful, functional building. Everybody likes it. But it took a long time to build. You know, altogether, it's probably like from when we cleared the site to pounding in the last uh, finishing nails, it was probably like three years. And I told that to a friend who um, had a, a background in uh, in engineering. And he told me something that encouraged me. He said that in... Uh, in uh, his in his uh, field, when you take on a, a big engineering project, they say you can have, there's three kind of desired things. You want to build it fast, cheap, and good. And you can only ever get two of those. <laughs> so that, that, that was encouraging to me. We got it for cheap and it was good. <laughs> but that meant it took a long time. <laughs> Thank you, Ajahn. Okay. So this is the path that leads from the pavilion to most of the other locations on the property. <laughs> นิเอตานิยุคานิโหติเตทากินัยยาสุขตัสสะวะกาเหเตสุทินนานิมหาปราณิธรรมบิสังเจรัตนปานิธรรมเอเตนัสสะเจนัสสุวาติโหนตุเ
อนุสาสนีพระุราปวัตติรูปังอนิจังเวทนาอนิจาสัญญาอนิจาสังขาราอนิจาวิญญาณังอนิจังรูปังอนัตตาเวทนาอนัตตาสัญญาอนัตตาสังขาราอนัตตาวิญญาณังอนัตตาสัมเพสังขาราอนิจจาสัมเพธรรมาอนัตตาติเอมยังโหตินนามหาชาติยาชรามรณีนาโสเกหิปริเทเวหิทุเกหิโทมนาเสหิอุปายาเสหิทุกโคตินนาทุกปเรตาอาเปวนามิมาสเกวรัสทุกขันธสอันตเกวิยาปัญญาเยทาติชีราปรินิพุตังปิตังภกวันตังอุติสารันตังสัมมาสัมพุตังสัทธาคารสัมมาณคาริยังปปาชิตาตัสสมิงภกวัติพระมัจจาริยังจารามาภิกุนังสิกาสัจจิวสัมมาปัญญาทางโนบรมาจาริยังหิมาสเกวรัสทุกขันธสัมตาเกลียยาสังวัตตุ